So, in this first video, I'm going to be going through some retro purchases I recently made while visiting my wife in Texas. Now, there was quite a few um, game stores that dealt with retro games as well as modern ones, and I want to do a shout out to three of those. One of them was Retro Madness, where I got a bulk of the stuff from. The next one was Game Exchange, uh, which is about 10 minutes from me and my wife's house, um, where we got some more of the other bits from. And the other one was Game Over in Arlington, which is about half an hour away, um, give or take as the crow flies. So, the first games I want to look at that I, uh, that I bought are from Retro Madness. And the first one is Fatal Rewind. There it is. All in its lovely black electronic arts cartridge glory. Now this, before taxes, cost $8. And I had a quick go of it. And it is just as I remember when playing, well, trying to play um, the Killing Game Show on the Amiga. It's exactly the same game, just just renamed. Um, still done by Psygnosis, and as I say, released by Electronic Arts. Um, this is actually possibly the cheapest I found um, the cartridge. Um, I had a quick go of it again, and it is it's still as good, but still as hard. Um, I can't wait to finally get fully stuck into this. Now, the next one, um, I've never actually heard of before. Um, or if I have, it was under a, a completely uh, different name, and that is Hyperzone. There it is. And if we can try and get it into focus. Come on, get into focus, where are you? Uh, oh, uh, that'll do. Right, so, yes, I have no idea if this is a overhead shoot -em up horizontal or vertical shoot -em up but um, when I have a go, I shall probably do an in-depth look at this one. Um, but, yeah, I mean, when I saw it on the shelf, I was like, well, I'll, I'll, when in Rome, do as the Germans do. So I thought, why not, and give it a, and, uh, and, and bought it. Um, I'm sorry if it's out of focus. I'm still trying to get to uh, grips with... There we go. That's better. That's got it. So there we go. Uh, in all its American Super Nintendo cartridge glory. There. So, the third game, again, for the Super Nintendo is Bram Stoker's Dracula. There it is. Now, is it going to go into focus again? Possibly not. So, there we go. Yes. Um, <clears throat> no, I haven't played this version at all. The only one I've really played is the Amiga version by Psygnosis again. Um, which was a big steaming pile of turd. I mean, it looked great, don't get me wrong. It looked absolutely fantastic, but it played like a horse's ass. And I mean, completely played like a horse's ass. It was just unbelievably difficult for no apparent reason whatsoever. So... I think well, probably when they made it, they was on something, or I don't know, they're, they, they're the spawn of Satan's arse, I really don't know, but as I say, I've never played this version before, so I don't know if it's the same as the Amiga version, if it was done by the same developer and just released by Sony ImageSoft, or if it's a completely different version altogether, I don't know, but hey-ho, we'll soon find out. Now, yeah. the fourth game... Uh, is an arcade and well just all round classic commando capcom's commando needs no introduction awesome game on the spectrum awesome game on the arcade i have never played the nes version so again this is literally this was a blind buy um so when it comes to eventually trying it out um well, yeah, when it comes to, uh, to trying it out, it will be quite a surprise. Um, so, yeah, I can't wait to try it on out. Now, in the same 
shop. I also got for my wife uh, a Sega Mega Drive because she used to have one a few years ago and it, it got lost somehow. We've no idea how, we've no idea where it is. And unfortunately, she also had a copy of Toe Jam L, which went walkies. So, so I bought her another Sega Mega Drive and I got her this to go with it. Everybody knows James Pond, underwater agent. Basically a goldfish in a tuxedo, blows bubbles and romances codfish, possibly. Um, another conversion of an Amiga Classic. Um, I had a quick go of this uh, a couple of days ago and it plays exactly the same as the Amiga version, um, if not just a tiny bit faster, but that doesn't really matter as it's still the same game and it's still good. But the second level is possibly the, well, I didn't even know what the hell I had to do, um, trying to pick up the uh, the radioactive barrels and end up losing, all, well, ended up losing all my lives, which was no fun whatsoever, but for $6, I thought it'd be a good way to introduce her to a platforming classic, so that's hers. Now, to go with her Mega Drive, I also bought her some other games. Now, these ones are from... Where were they from? Where were they from? Game Exchange. That's the one. Game Exchange. Uh, the one that's, uh, that's, that, that's close to us here in, uh, here in Fort Worth. Now... There is a mixture of games here, um, a couple of arcade classics, uh, well, one arcade classic, one, I suppose, arcade classic, if, I, I don't know, I mean, I've, I've played it in the arcade, but we'll get to that one in a minute, but the first one, Ms. Pac-Man, everybody knows Pac-Man, everybody knows Ms. Pac-Man, and basically everyone knows that you have to run around a maze or waddle around a maze or roll or whatever the hell that she does um, around a maze picking up dots and avoiding the ghosts so as i say it's it's pac-man but just with uh, a bow gloves kinky boots i suppose lipstick and eyeliner so, yeah, it's just basically just Miss Pac-Man. Exactly the same as Pac-Man, really. <laughs> Needs no introduction. Now, this one. Um, never played it before until, again, a couple of days ago. Um, and I still have no idea how to get past the first level. Animaniacs. Now... I do love a good platform game. I love a hard platform game. I love an easy platform game. I love a whiskey drink and a vodka drink. But that's neither here nor there. Um, with this one, it looked good. Sounded good. It's classic Konami. Um, but trying to do that very first level after you've moved a box as Wacko or Yakko, well, him pretty much um and then trying to get past a camera which you can't jump past you can't even jump on one of the moving platforms it, it's frustrating but if anyone can get past it my wife can because she used to spend ages playing toe jam and Earl. she knows how to get past bad guys so and get past obstacles so She'll know how to get past that. So, you know, good luck to her if she can get past the first level. First proper level, that is. The next one, as I say, is another arcade conversion, and that's Revolution X, featuring the music of Aerosmith and Aerosmith themselves. Now, I played the arcade version of this in Arlington, in an arcade called Freeplay. Uh, first time I'd ever seen the arcade machine, first time I'd ever played the game. I managed to get to the end of level two, I think it was, before coming a cropper. Um, it was absolutely rock hard. Um, definitely designed to 
eat all your tempies or quarters or whatever currency. Um, haven't tried the home version yet, but I mean, how hard can it be? You know, it's it's a light gun game. Um, pretty much probably the same as Terminator 2 Arcade, um, which was which was an awesome game, but um, just see how it plays, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was four bucks. Four bucks. I mean, granted the label isn't in as good condition as it could be, I mean, but for four bucks, you know, it's, it's, it's worth a go. You know, so why not? Now, the next one is a staple of the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis uh, library. And you don't even need a magic carpet to play it. I mean, it's Aladdin. What more needs to be said? Um, made by Virgin Games and Disney, uh, with the animation drawn, hand-drawn, by Disney artists themselves, and then digitised into colourful graphics. It is possibly one of the Mega Drive's finest games, uh, along with Lion King, I would say. Even though The Lion King is harder than French kissing a boa constrictor and python at the same time. Um, this one's a tad more easier, but it's also a lot more fun. And the best thing is, for 13 bucks, it's complete and in good nick. Maybe a couple of creases on the instruction manual, but bargain. You know, it's Aladdin. It was $13. It's cheap at half the price, and it's a fantastic game. So, definite bargain for my wife to try. She's never played the game before, but she loves platform games. So, and it was just sitting there in the uh, in the box of uh, bargain gear, as I say, at Game Exchange. So it was a it was a no brainer, really. Now the next one, as I said earlier on, my wife loves Toe Jam and L. I mean, absolutely. Adores it. It's one of her favourite games, if not her favourite game of all time. We actually spent four hours the other night between us playing this. It's so addictive. So German, it? <laughs> the original. Probably very dated in terms of. Oh, what'd you call it? Um, someone help me out. Um, yes, you in the back. No, not sausages. Um, uh, well, whatever it is, anyway. Um, cultural references, that's it. Or something along those lines, anyway. But still, it doesn't matter. It's a time capsule for all things very early 90s and very late 80s. Um, it's tons of fun. It still looks absolutely fantastic. It sounds brilliant. The music is, well... We were listening to the music in the car on the way to, funny enough, pick up the Sega Sega Genesis the other day. And we were both just bopping along to it because it's such amazing music. You can't help but love it. And yes, it was $35, which is about 27 quid, roughly. That's before tax. So after tax, about 29. But it doesn't matter. It's Toe Jam and L. And um, yeah, it hasn't got the box, it hasn't got the instructions, but you can pick up a box, Mega Drive game box, cheap as chips these days probably, and you can probably print out the uh, the inlay yourself and cut it out to size and whack it in there and hey-ho, you've got a fully boxed game. But yeah, it's still a brilliant game today and it's still a right bastard to play, especially when you've got four lots of bees coming after you, the Mad Doctor... The woman in, with the trolley, with the screaming child in it, and a horde of nerds. Yeah, exactly. But it's still a lot of fun to play. Well worth picking up. <clears throat> now, these purchases are today from Game Over Games, as I say, in Arlington. So, thank you to them. Now, these... These are, well, the, the, this game is 
possibly one of the nicest, most complete examples of this game I've ever seen. Uh, $25, some people say, oh, that's expensive, you should have bought the power version. But it's not for me. It's for my wife and for me and my wife to play together. So by the time I bought it in the UK, it probably would have cost a little bit more after I've shipped it over. Or even if even if I could find a cheap enough copy, it would probably be cartridge only. But this, again, it's complete. It's in absolute mint condition, apart from obviously a few creases on the instruction manual. But the cartridge is absolutely mint. Look at that. It's like it's never actually been played. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. So for 25 bucks, that was an absolute steal. It's like they, they, they might as well have just paid me to take it away, you know? But that's probably one of the best examples, obviously apart from Aladdin, but minus the water damage that I accidentally done yesterday. <laughs> Oops. Um, that's probably one of the best examples of mint condition box and cartridge that there is, especially, as I say, for 25 bucks. Works out about 20 quid. So it's cheap and half the price. Now, the next thing. When I got the Sega Genesis, there was only one control pad. So for us to be able to play two player games together, like Zoom, so Germanel and Revolution X and is Miss Pac-Man two player? Maybe it's two players probably on the same control pad, but this we couldn't pass up. The retro bit, Sega Genesis controller, wired for 15 bucks. 15 bucks for a brand new Sega Genesis six button controller. I couldn't believe it myself. I mean, there'll probably be people out there saying, oh, yeah, that's standard price. But you end up paying about 17, about probably 17 bucks for a, a used one because they actually had a, a used six button official Sega one for $17. And this was 15 brand new by Retrobit, officially licensed by Sega. I mean, look at it. It's brand new and it's blue. It's Sonic color. I mean, how great is that? It's amazing. I, I, I actually love, look at this control pad, not even taken it out of the box yet. Mind you, it's, it's, it's for the wife. So, you know, I'll let her take it out and, and you know. But 15 bucks. Bargain at half the price. Now, for the final item, I actually was debating with myself whether to go back and get this. And I'm glad I did because I missed out on it first time around when I came over in 2018. And I wish I bought it then. And ever since I've been watching copies on eBay, they've been going for like 45, 50 quid, which is roughly about the same price, but then you've got postage from the US, which bumps it up to 70, 80 quid. So that's roughly about $100, but this, I was well chuffed with this for $60, which works out about 45 quid. And if you're an R-Type fan, it is a must. I mean, the box is pretty weighty. I mean, it's a thick, Thick box, very thick box. It's even got the lovely iron logo on the top. Look, upside down. Whoops. I mean, look at that. How amazing is that? And that on the back as well. That's absolutely brilliant. And this again is by Retrobit. If you can see that. There we go. Published by Retrobit. Now, this box set has a Super Nintendo Super Famicom cartridge as it's universal. Um, well, it's region free, but you probably still need an adapter to play out on a UK machine and a Japanese machine, but that's neither here nor there. You get the hardcover art book. You get two limited edition enamel P3 
pin badges in a set. Uh, original art prints there, so it's a bit out of focus. There you go. And a lovely exclusive sticker collection. But all that is going to stay in the box. I mean, part of me is actually thinking, keep it sealed. Keep it safe. And I need to stop doing impressions of Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. But other than that, I'm actually thinking of keeping this sealed and just having it as a nice collector's piece. Because I've got a reproduction of R-Type 3. I've got a Japanese version of Super R-Type that I can play. So this will just literally be a collector's piece. Um, I mean, obviously, if I do end up selling... Super art up and dumping my top three cartridge, then yes, I will open it and I will play it. And I would love to see the contents inside, but for a collector's piece, it's a beautiful, beautiful box. And it's quite big as well. That's what she said. I mean, look. I mean, there's some kind of shine to the uh, R-Type 3 and Super R-Type uh, typography. And also the collector's edition. And there's also embossed stars on the box as well how awesome is that for, I mean, for any art type collector this is possibly one of the best sets to buy i mean it, it's it's worth it's worth every penny and worth every cent whoops so definitely worth a purchase and i'm sorry if that's gone out of focus again because my phone is utterly shite so yes <sighs> i haven't thought that bit through there you go. <laughs> so you can see it again. <laughs> oh. But yeah. Right. That is the end of this first episode. I hope you've enjoyed this little walk through my recent purchases. Not only for me, but for my wife. Um, next week, I will be giving you instructions on how to do swing dancing. And if it is right for you. So, in the meantime, I bid you adieu, and I'm going to go play with the wife. Um, I mean, go play Toe Jam and Earl with the wife. <laughs>